Hi, in this video I will talk about my uh, ease surgery experience and I will first explain what the ease surgery is and I will uh, talk about my experience and I will discuss the results and also the future of my treatment plan. So let's start with an explanation of the ease procedure. And E stands for Endoscopically Assisted Surgical Expansion. And it's a method invented by uh, Dr. Casey Lee for treating sleep apnea. And what it does is it surgically expands uh, your maxilla. So you will surgically split the mid palatal suture and um, the pterygo maxillary suture. I did this procedure in uh, Germany with uh, Dr. Holweg Majet. I think the procedure should be the same, but my, just a disclaimer that it might be slightly different, I don't know. So basically, um, the procedure is you are put under general anesthesia, then the surgeon will cut the sutures that need to be split, this is done by using a uh, endoscopic camera. You will cut the bone in the nose using a cauterizing uh, blade for, for the nose and then you will cut the mid palatal suture from inside your nose. Um, and you will also make three cuts inside your um, mouth. And this is to split uh, first the mid palatal suture, so you make a cut in front of your front teeth. And you will also make uh, a cut on both, both sides um, to split the pterygal maxillary uh, suture. So that's the cuts you will make and then um, the surgeon will make and then the surgeon will expand using either a TPD, which is basically just a kind of like a rod you put between your uh, teeth uh, in your palate. And then you expand this, or you can uh, use an MSC, which we used in my case. Uh, Casey Lee always used the TPD as far as I know. But in my case, we used an MSC which um, they should be should be the same but uh, some say that the TPD uh, will make the uh, expansion more symmetrical I don't know if, if that's true or not but I don't, I don't know if anyone knows but yeah anyhow in, anyhow in my case we use the MSE with eight screws so we put in six screws in the palate and then uh, two in the uh, alveolar bone. Yeah, and then when these cuts are done and the surgeon managed to expand, and um, then you are stitched together, um, not in the nose because you are using a cauterizing in that place, so you don't need any stitches, uh, but in your uh, gum you do. That's basically the procedure for the ease. And then you wake up and yeah, you start your healing. So I will talk now about my experience having this surgery. And first, before having it, I spent just a few days before I removed my MSE and then I put in this 8-pin MSE, which uh, worked fine except for one screw, didn't go down uh, fully, it's still it's still stuck in there, so that's fine, I guess. But yeah, that's kind of a failure. And uh, yeah, I tried uh, tried taking painkillers immediately after I had this uh, MSC put in, but didn't actually really help much. It was quite painful for a few hours, and I had to like just sit and spit for a few hours because the saliva just keeps on increasing. 
So that kind of sucks, but yeah, it, it go, the pain goes away after a few hours, so you, you just have to endure it. And the surgery was um, not too bad. You uh, get into the place where you're having the surgery and you put on the clothes, um, this gown you're gonna wear. Then you lay down basically and then they inject you with some sleeping aid and you f kind of get very relaxed and fall asleep quickly, almost immediately. And then you wake up uh, after a few hours and you are very tired and uh, I was bleeding from my nose quite a lot and uh, I was kind of moving <laughs> my legs a lot. So they asked if I had restless leg syndrome but um, Probably it was just because my legs were uh, have been laying stale for so long, I, they just needed to get some blood flowing. And yeah, your throat is kind of fucked up as well, because when you're having general anesthesia, they put down a breathing tube through your throat, so... That's something to keep in mind, that your throat voice will be fucked for like a week or two afterwards, at least in my case. Um, and then, yeah, they check your blood pressure and they gave me some IV, I don't know what it was, something to flush, it might be given, I don't know, I have no, no idea, honestly, actually. And yeah, they check your blood pressure and that everything is fine and then um, they call a taxi and I got back to the ho hotel and uh, yeah, I spent the night at the hotel, um, still bleeding uh, quite a bit. It's not like a lot of blood, but it's kind of slowly dripping uh, for a long time, so that's kind of annoying. And it was like this for a week, it just kind of was fine for like several hours, and then it started bleeding for a few hours, and then it yeah, went like this back and forth. Um, and then yeah, the other day after, I just went to the dentist to check on the MSE and everything. So that it was fine. And the day after this, the second day, I also went to um, the place. I had the surgery. They check everything, make sure it's fine. Um, yeah. And another kind of funny thing is that when I woke up from surgery, I kind of felt felt like my neck and back felt surprisingly good. I don't know if it was this, this uh, sedation they used, but it really feel felt like my body was very relaxed and like I'm usually a little bit stiff so that's kind of weird uh, yeah anyhow eating is a bit hard especially swallowing uh, it will take a few days before you can la like move your jaw properly so I just didn't eat for a few days just to heal and not have to think about that and you kind of have this weird taste and smell in your mouth. It kind of tastes like uh, liver or something, you know, kind of <laughs> organ meat. And then it smells kind of like burnt skin, which I think is from this cauterization they use in the nose. Um, and yeah, you also have no feeling in your palate. I still don't have it. It's still a bit numb, but it's supposedly it's it's can take up to six months for your feeling to come back and uh, yeah then you have the stitches in your mouth which you are supposed to take uh, um, cuts off in like 10 days or so which you sure you can do at your dentist or wherever but most of them fell off and the ones that were left they took like a very small scissor and just cut off and then pulled them out and then you get kind of like a, it feels like, uh, yeah, you get scars where the suture uh, the, um, yeah, has been. So that's something to also keep in mind that you will get scars um, in your gums. And yeah, that's basically the ease surgery. Uh, and then after a week, I started expansion. Um, and I spanned for almost a month 
and the expansion was mo mostly fine in the beginning it was symmetrical but i think towards the end it became a bit asymmetrical so it expanded a bit more on my right side this side um, so you can see the teeth are a bit kind of lower and it looks kind of yeah uh, a bit angled um, but it was also already a bit asymmetrical from the previous expansion um, and it after a while at the end it kind of started hurting a bit so um, at that point I stopped turning and actually had to pull back a bit because it was kind of expanding uh, hurting a bit in my nose too much um, and I think I uh, I don't know how much expansion I did actually probably as much as previously which was like three or four millimeters so I think I probably expanded as much this time maybe even more so so in total I would I guess it's like at least seven or eight millimeters I've expanded and when I turned the screw this time I really just compared to the previous MSCs I really felt it like in your my um, uh, yeah, in my cheekbones and my nose, yeah, you really feel like it's kind of you're ex really expanding. Um, so that's that's a good sign, of course. And so the question is also though that if the MSC or the TPD would make a difference, because the MSC has a tendency to expand asymmetrically. But in this case, the sutures are already split, so I don't know if a TPD like this rod I was talking about earlier would have mattered or not. I don't know. Maybe this uh, screw that was uh, not engaged completely, maybe that mat matters. I don't know. So I would say, like, that's uh, the, the drawback, of course, is that this was a bit asymmetrical. And there's also another drawback is these scars you will get in your gun. And I kind of feel like the scar I have um, in the front, be, uh, in the front of my upper teeth, my front teeth. I mean, um, it kind of almost feels like my upper lip is too short. Like the the scar, scars feel like too uh, too short almost. So that's it. Kind of sucks. That's something you have to keep in mind that you will have scars and they might uh, feel bad and maybe even affect you aesthetically but yeah of course the improvements is um, the breathing is uh, slightly improved so that's nice it's not perfect so that sucks but it's still improved which is nice and um, yeah um, so the question is uh, was it worth it it cost me like 5,500 euro just for the surgery and the MSC and all that stuff I already paid for. So, I mean, thing is, I, I don't know if it's worth it or not, but I, have, I had to do it just to, uh, just to see if I would improve. And I did, so I guess in that sense it is. Um, yeah, and another improvement is also, of course, that my palette is a bit wider, which will look better when the teeth are aligned. Once again, it, you will get a wider smile, which is nice, of course. And when I look back at old pictures, when I see my smile, it looks uh, looks almost silly because it's so it's so uh, it's so narrow. So that's 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 a positive thing if you're if you care about your looks. Um, but yeah, in general. I would say like uh, all these procedures have to be kind of careful like the MEC, the ease because these doctors they are kind of selling a product at the end of the day and uh, they usually like to show the all the great successes they have but there is also problems like the asymmetry and this uh, the scars you will have and stuff like this so that's why it's important to uh, do research and that's why also why I'm sharing sharing my experience so you know this when you do uh, make your own decision. So for the future though, um, I'm gonna get on Invisalign as soon as possible. I have a, yeah, I just have this uh, plastic mold to keep my teeth from moving around at this 
time. And yeah, so that's the kind of the what 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 will happen next is I will get on the line again and then close the gap and fix the bite and all this stuff. And I think um, further into the future, I um, saw an uh, an interview with um, or a discussion with a ear, nose, throat surgeon called Macintosh uh, and uh, Mike Mew, and they said something very interesting. They said that uh, if you're wearing crutches, you can get kind of a thing called like the crutch effect, I think it is called, where if you're wearing crutches on one side, the nose will clog up on, I don't know if it's the same or if it's the opposite side, uh, this comes from like your body being uneven and I think this might be what has happened to me because my body is uneven and my like bite is kind of uneven and I think this is why I'm congested on just my right side and also why my neck pain is on my left side so it's like I have this crutch effect um, and also when I was young they pulled an uneven number of teeth uh, in my lower jaw and uh, I don't know if my jaw was crooked to begin with but at around, around the same time I um, started walking crooked and people were telling me I was walking funny they were like <laughs> kind of making fun of me like uh, mimicking the way I walked because I would walk with like uh, yeah, I would walk a bit crooked, basically, which I think is, yeah, that's kind of because my whole body became crooked, which uh, I think comes from having a crooked bite. Um, there's actually another guy on YouTube called Neil Hallian, and he has had the same problem with his, his bite is crooked. And what he did is he uh, made a splint, which he uses so that his bite gets even. And when he uses this, his spine and his pelvic tilt and all of this actually became straight. So that's maybe something I will look into in the future, depending on how my bite ends up. Um, because yeah, that would be would be nice to get um, yeah make my body straight and symmetrical. And I think the key to do this is to have a symmetrical bite to get this mind-body connection working. So yeah, I think that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, you just ask them and I will see if I can answer them. But yeah, in the meantime, thanks for watching and goodbye.